about, hey, I'm trying to build a garage gym, what should I start with? So let's talk about budgeting. Do it slowly over time. Don't be that rich guy who writes a check to roguefitness.com for three to $5,000 dollars has everything arrive, they get it all set up, and then it never gets used after a month. And then guys like me buy it for pennies on the dollars off the rich guy because uh, he got overzealous. So most of you all are on a budget, myself included. Let's start with the most economical. It's gonna be a sandbag. Now you can make your own sandbag, that's fine. I like brute force sandbags. You can, we'll put links to everything in the video. It will be an Amazon type purchase so you can get free shipping. This is a brute force. It comes with several different handles, which I like. You can make your own on the cheap. You need several contractor bags. You need sand that's not wet and maybe an old duffel bag. And you can just get tube sand, put it in, contractor bag, tape it up, do that rinse and repeat three or four times, then put it in the duffel, there you go. This is 50 pounds. It might be 48.7 pounds because of some sand leaking out, but this is a staple and this is cheap. The next thing is dumbbells. Don't buy dumbbells online unless you can get like free shipping like off Amazon. Otherwise, shop your Craigslist, your Facebook marketplace. Get the kind with some rubber so you can drop them when you're tired. I have 25s. 50s and 70s. Uh, the first pair I ever bought was 50s, then we needed some 25s, and now we have 70s. So that's what I would get is your sandbag, your dumbbells. Next is a pull-up bar. Now there's a caveat to this. Pull-up bar like that was not my first purchase. This is attached to a squat rig. This is one of the last things I bought. This is one of the final pieces. We'll come back to that. This is the first pull-up bar that I ever bought. And what it is is the kind that you can mount to studs in your garage. And it's super easy to assemble. Uh, you can get them off Amazon or Road Fitness. And I think this is a great way for you to be able to do pull-ups or to hook bands to it and do assisted pull-ups. Uh, you can do a lot of jumping pull-ups. We like pull-ups or pull-up variations thereof. And it's never gonna go out of style. So after you've made your sandbag or purchased your sandbag, Bust out your carpentry tools and build yourself a box. This is a 20 by 24 by 30. The dimensions are online. We'll drop a link in the show notes. And you can build your own box on the cheap. All you need is a sheet of plywood. Get a good piece of plywood and make sure that if you don't have a table saw, have the, the construction store like Lowe's or whatever, beg them and they'll probably cut if you bring your dimensions in, they'll do your main cuts for you. You'll need some wood glue, you'll need some wood screws, you want to pre-drill and make it look as good as possible. Um, the fancy things like a weight vest are not necessary, you can wear a weighted pack, but this is a 5'11 tactical weight vest, it's 20 pounds. This is the fancier one that you can wear on runs and it doesn't slide everywhere. From there, now you can kind of start looking at, all right, what's my next priority? For some people, maybe you live in a place where it's cold and you can't go running in the winter, you might need something that we call monostructural. I have three in my garage gym. Here's the order in which I bought them. The first thing I bought was an assault bike. These are $6.99. Sometimes you can find them on Amazon for $6.49. We'll drop a link. This bike is better than any other bike. This causes the most pain. This works all the muscles, this gets the heart rate jacked. It's a fan bike. There's not all fan bikes are created equal. So I'm gonna tell you right now, I've been on several. The Schwinn, the Airdynes, the Rogue Echoes, the Assault Bike from Life Fitness, I believe it's Life Core. These guys got it going on, so get this. Now the next monostructural that I bought was about a year later, I bought a skier. 
because I can attach it to the wall and look how much space I can save. And so this is a great total body workout, a lot of midline, a lot of shoulders, lats, and legs, mostly posterior chain. And this is from Concept 2, and this will last literally forever. So a lot of longevity there. Then the last piece I bought was a rower, and I actually bought it used. I found a gym, that, a CrossFit gym that was going out of business. And I know the guy paid probably close to 1000 to get it shipped to his door. I bought it off him for 700 bucks. Don't be surprised if you can't get a, really much of a deal on rowers because they do last forever and honestly, they, they hold their value. So there's your model structural pieces. Um, one thing to suggest and one thing you will see me eventually upgrade is these, this mat stuff is from like a, uh, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot and they're like 20 bucks for a three by three. I like horse stall mats, but horse stall mats um, half inch. Five by seven is what I would usually get because it cover more space and I didn't need three fourths. Um, when we first opened up a gym, we did buy the four by eight, three quarter inch. It's really thick, really heavy, hard to move, but it's definitely more stout. They're about the same price, so you can get more real estate with a five by seven, but those prices have gone up. So when I opened a gym, I bought 140 mats. 5x7 and I was paying like 45 bucks um, for a mat. Now they're up to 70. So see if you can get a bulk price. The last thing I'll say about flooring is maybe get a roll of flooring, which is the most economical, and then you have no gaps. But flooring is gonna be something that you think about. It's not the sexiest purchase. I think that's when you're ready to level up, you get your flooring. Now let's talk squat rack. Uh, a squat rack for me was a great purchase. This is from Rogue. I can pop the pins out. I'm not gonna do that right now because we're about to work out and I can move this whole thing up against the wall. So if you still did want to park in your garage, you could move this out of the way, but we don't park in the garage, so this stays where it is. So in hindsight, I probably would have bought a fixed squat rack, but this one does have the potential to move. Now let's talk barbell. Don't be cheap on a barbell. Spend the money, spend the dough, get a really good barbell. We have uh, Tim's bar here. This is the same bar that I have. Mine's the red, his is the tan, and they're both Rogue Ohio bars. Uh, the Rogue Econo bar is another good choice. That's gonna be at least a $200 barbell. Don't skimp on barbells. Then you can get yourself some bumper plates. These are competition bumper plates. These are Tim's. They're expensive, two, three bucks a pound. And then you have your high temps down here. These are really durable. They last a long time, and I would go with the high temp. They're a little bit bigger, but man, do they work well. They, they will last over time, especially if your garage gets really cold. You don't want to be dropping cold competition bumper plates. They could crack or break, I've seen it happen. Then we have competition like plates that have, these are in kg because I'm an idiot. I would have rather have them in pounds. I'm not huge into Olympic weightlifting and I don't calculate in kgs, but just having some competition fractional plates and things like that are really handy. So when you get your barbell, get a weight set of about 350 pounds of bumpers, go with the high temp, spin your dough on a good barbell. You can definitely save loot on get, not getting such fancy and you can also find these used um, Craigslist marketplace. A good jump rope, super uh, economical. These are RPMs, these spin really fast. I also have a Zeus rope from RX Smart Gear. That's a weighted jump rope. So we have those, those are on the cheap. And then the last thing I'll talk about is over here. We use rings. Now I don't have a rig set up yet outside, but we are gonna be pouring something and setting up rings so we can do muscle ups. But these are wood rings, not necessary unless you plan on doing muscle ups and things like that, but we do a lot of work like a TRX. So if you're gonna buy a TRX, I would, I would say veto that, get some rings, maybe get them the kind that are not made out of wood. And, and you can do so much with ring rows and push-ups and pull-ups, things like that. And then obviously the crossover symmetry, I'll put a link here, crossover symmetry for bulletproofing your shoulder. This is gonna run you about 100 bucks to get a set and we do so much injury prevention. There's other things out there like kettlebells, medicine balls, all that kind of stuff. Those are not as important as you uh, start out, but just accumulate bit by bit, piece by piece over time, and eventually you'll have a, a dope setup like this. The last couple of things I can think of is that you might wanna get some clips for your barbell, spend some good money, get some good clips so your weights don't fall off. Uh, we have a couple of trap bars, 
farmer walk bars. I mean, you can get really fancy. The only piece that I'm looking at investing in from here on out is a GHD machine, a glute ham developer. Uh, but that's not a must, that's a should. And then we do have our sleds. Take a peek at our sleds. They're super economical and they can crush your soul. But that's kind of what we got at Elk Shape HQ. Take a picture, send it to us on Instagram. Let us see your garage gym. Tag us in, the, in your comments below if you have questions and we'll get to them and answer them. But yeah, build your own. If you build it, they will come.